Are arc overhangs the next big thing, or are they just a cool experiment? I'm Steven, and today I'll talk about three improvements I made to arc overhangs this week, and what you can do to help. So, in CNC Kitchen's recent video, he brought a lot of attention to arc overhangs, and the community had literally hundreds of great ideas for ways it can be used and improved upon. I've taken a few of the most promising ideas and tried them out to see how they improve the quality and reliability of arc overhangs. So what can be improved with arc overhangs? There are a few issues currently, and the most obvious one to me is that the bottom surface quality, well, I mean, there's a reason people are calling them nip overhangs. It leaves a lot to be desired. It's pretty clear that the main reason for the poor bottom surface quality is that the smallest arcs don't have enough time to cool down, so they just droop. This effect is most obvious near the edges, where dozens of micro arcs uh, that are created to fill the small gap around the perimeter, they really bulge out and droop and look terrible. If we can eliminate these smaller arcs, then the quality of the overhangs should be greatly improved. So, I implemented three ideas that the community suggested to see if we can eliminate all of these micro arcs. The first improvement is to offset the arcs slightly so that the center is actually hidden inside the previous arc. This means that instead of a tiny dot of filament, the first arc is much larger, giving it more time to cool, hopefully reducing the drooping effect. The second idea kind of builds off of the first one and it is to change the print settings for the smallest arcs. Now, the small arcs print much slower with a lower flow rate, and this should help them cool down faster, further reducing the drooping effect. The third improvement is to eliminate all the small arcs around the edge and replace them with concentric rings based on the shape of the perimeter. Some people were asking why we can't just do concentric rings for the whole shape. And the reason for that is because it will result in some really strange shapes that don't print properly. I think combining arcs with concentric perimeters is the best of both ideas. And this improvement also had the added benefit of making the Python script run about 10 times faster because it was producing much fewer arcs. So here are my results. Here's what the test square looked like before any changes were made. As you can see, there's a lot of drooping and the overhang looks quite bad, especially around the edges. With the first change, overlapping the arcs, it actually seemed to make things worse. Uh, I don't really know why, so I do want to experiment with this a little bit more, but yeah, the results weren't exactly what I was expecting here. The second test, changing the speed and flow rate for the smallest arcs, actually seemed to make a small improvement, um, and the print quality on the center is looking a bit better. So I'm quite happy with this, and I'll keep that change in the code going forward. The best improvement by far is eliminating the smaller arcs by replacing them with concentric rings around the edge. The print still has a few issues, but you can see that it is just so much better than what we started with. There are so many more ideas out there, and I can't possibly test them all myself. If you can code with Python, try forking my repository and adding your own improvements. There are so many ways that this can still be improved, and I think some of them might actually not be that hard to do. So please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next, and that's it for today. So I'll see you in the next video.